Yes. Persian food. Taruf Nakon. And now we're getting to the part that I love. (laughs) Okay. So there's hardly a person that doesn't like Persian food, especially Tadigi, the bottom of the pot, or we call it Benkar. So let's start off with the Taruf. Now, listen, you're talking to a 60-year-old MBA, Mashadi born in America. So I pieced this together just growing up here. Taruf was this ceremonial gesture when today, if you're invited to somebody's house for a meal, specifically Shabbat, I think, especially on the Chagim, whenever you were first offered food, you would decline. And then the hostess would say, no, I insist. And then they would decline. And then on the third thrust, the rice would start coming off of the the platter. What is this ceremony, taruf, um, handling? Is there were the haves and the have-nots. In the mashadis, when they would invite people, they didn't want the have-nots to be embarrassed. So everybody would decline. No, 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 it's okay. I didn't come for the food. I came for the company. Oh, it wow. could have been starving. But they all would say, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not going to have anything. And then they would go, no, I insist. No, I insist. So that's my understanding of the dignity wow. that people had for their guests that the person that came shouldn't be ashamed. Mm. That they right. gave so, so interesting because um, my family actually has a minhag that they could trace back where they had the first night of Pesach when they moved, I think it was to Italy or to Israel. Um, I forget, but they were they had they would invite Ashkenazi guests the first night and they wouldn't serve them rice, obviously, because they don't eat rice. So the first night of Pesach, we don't eat rice. My family, I don't know about other families in the community, and I to me, this is like an amazing thing because we can actually trace back this tradition. And it, and it's a beautiful idea. It's something we could teach our children why we do it. It's, it's an amazing thing. But funny enough about the taraf thing about, you know, like, uh, no, no, please, I don't want. So there was a commercial, a really funny commercial in Israel many years ago, probably around my bar mitzvah time. It was like, I think it was like a Pizza Hut commercial. And all these, all these Persians are sitting around a table. And obviously there's a you know, there's this uh, unfair or maybe fair um, uh, depiction of Persians being cheap. So when the bill comes, all of the, everyone's fighting over the check. <laughs> and, they're, and, and they're saying, uh, I lie, I lie, oh, no, I lie, I lie, I'm going to pay, I'm going to pay. And this is just going on for, the, the whole commercial is them just fighting over the bill because actually no one wants to pay. <laughs> so I thought it was a brilliant... Uh, that was great. So I want to share my family story about rice on Pesach. Because Mashadis, we eat rice on Pesach, except the Abramovs, I thought. So during World War II, my father's family, my grandfather, they moved out of London into a southern extremity of Great Britain to a city called Turkey. It was a resort city for people to go in the summertime. And they bought it in partnership with an Ashkenazi family. And it had tennis courts that they dug up and planted beets. And it turns out that this story takes place at the, the eve of Pesach. And this part doesn't make sense, but my grandfather was cooking rice for Pesach. And the Ashkenazi man said to him, ah, Mr. Ibrahimov, what a shame. You have a brand new koshala Pesach pot, but you're cooking chametz in it. You're cooking the rice. He didn't know it's okay. So in order not to um, be misunderstood, my grandfather instituted this Ibrahimov policy not to eat rice on Pesach. Mm. Okay, we never had rice on Pesach. 
One year, my family goes to London. And the Abramovs, I had Auntie Esther, Auntie Julie, Auntie Rachel. So the first say there, I'm sitting around the table, and Auntie Julie comes with a big platter of rice. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, what gives over here? She goes, what do you mean, what gives? I go, Abramovs don't eat rice on Pesach. She goes, that's right. I'm not an Abramov. I married Mr. Levy. Mr. Levy doesn't have this custom. I go, oh my God. Next night, Auntie Esther, big platter. And again, Auntie Esther, you're in the brine wolf. You don't eat rice on Pesach. Correct. Until I got married to Mr. Yechezkel. He doesn't have that rule. So then I'm sitting there saying, you know something? I'm eating rice and I'm not changing my halacha and my minhag for an Ashkenazi ignoramus. So <laughs> I think we're going to win this one. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a little bit about Persian food. And to me, it is something where it is exceptionally delicious and it, it 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 just is something where you could see rice in the persian cuisine in the persian menu is the centerpiece i remember when people would come to our house and they would start to take the rice if they took a spoonful of rice and put it on the side of the plate rookie they didn't know what was going on eventually <laughs> So if you knew the guy ate Persian even once before, it was in the middle of the plate and like it was piled high. So there you see this dish and you see, I think that's also the bottom of the pot uh, on the rice plate where uh, I actually make it now that you can make it with slivered potatoes and then you take some half cooked rice and egg and saffron and you mix it up and you put it down and that then hardens into what is this extraordinarily delicious equivalent of a dog bone that people fight over it it is just an amazing treat and then persian food you have a lot of kebabs and goulashes and that's what we grew up in it's not spicy food it's seasoned food Yes, and uh, a lot of herbs, and we we actually have a, we call it choresh, which is like a, a stew that we put on top of the rice. Some people there's green ones, there's red ones, um, and actually there's some exclusively mashadi ones like chalona chodob. That's the that's my favorite one. I call it my my nickname for it is the sleeping pill because Friday night <laughs> Friday night I just I just I can't I can't even like lift my head after I eat that food coma food coma. And um, Robali is another, I believe, unique to the yeah. Mashadi community. Yeah, they have other rice dishes, but the oh, Bukharians, Bukharians have the Ashpalo, which is very similar. There's right. a, a probably better. I'll be so honest. somebody told me Robali is for Kabul, that it's, it uh -huh. came from Kabul, Robali, Kabuli, whatever it was. So there's a little bit about the cuisine. Uh, Benjamin, this is your. Koresh, that you were talking about. This is, this is, uh, this is, is that, no, that's not Karaps. That's uh, Gourmet Sabzi. Yep. You have, you can do Google images and you could take this picture and it will <laughs> give you the recipe from Google. It's, and Persian food is not spicy. It's also, by the way, totally different is about the desserts that we grew up on cookies and pie and nuts and tea. And Ashkenazi is like cakes, spongy cakes and chocolate. Persians don't, I mean, listen, now it's different. But when we were kids, we, they were just out of England and th there was no chocolate so much at the table. It's not something we grew up with. Or sugar, sugar covered almonds. That kind of stuff. That that was and like the there was the gaz. It kind of looks like a, a marshmallow it, uh, and pistachios coming out, but it, it's basically cement for your teeth. Nougat. It's made by the American Dental Association. <laughs> exactly. It's one big racket. It's one big racket. <laughs> this is tadigi. This ta means the bottom. Dich 
is a pot. This is the bottom of the pot, but it's like this whole flip it over ceremony when it's ready to be served. And you can see it's yellow because they, they make it with saffron in it. And this one was made without potatoes.